Hi, I'm Amanda Jones, and you're watching the second video in a series about fractions. I've been using Polypad from Mathagon to model these fractions to just have a visual representation of sometimes an abstract concept. Now, this doesn't take the place of hands-on manipulatives, but it can sometimes make it a little quicker and easier in a classroom. So I'm looking here at adding fractions. Um, some example problems up here. And the first one, 1 8 plus 3 8 I like to relate this back to a real world problem. Uh, maybe you have 1 8 of a pizza left and you have another box that has 3 8 of a pizza left. And your question is, how much pizza do you have? What is the total here? And when the denominators are the same, it becomes a little bit easier because that pizza has been cut into the same number of pieces. So we're dealing with two pizzas that have been cut into eight pieces. So really all we need to do is count up how many pieces we have out of a pizza that's been cut into eighths. So I'll model that. One eighth, I'm going to grab an eighth here. And then three eighths, I'm going to grab an eighth here and make three of them. So now we have one eight, the unit fraction, and then three of those eights. We're adding them, that's just combining them together. We're just taking this pizza and putting it in the box with the other section of pizza. So there you can see it, they're combining together. And we have four of those eights. So I'm gonna write that, we have four eights. But whenever we are doing a fraction operation, at the end, we want to make sure that everything is simplified. And so if we can write this in smaller terms, smaller numbers, reduce the fraction, simplify the fraction, then we want to. And this app helps us do that. I can select this um, and, and merge it together because it's all one now. We added them together. And, um, and sometimes I'll just reposition, and that's that's just a reposition, it's not anything fancy. Uh, and then we're just going to hit this button to see if we can get to smaller terms. So the second one is smaller terms. This one's going to take you to larger um, denominators, so cutting it into more pieces. And then this is going to take you to smaller denominators, so trying to get to um, how many pieces this pizza could be cut into. You can see we're getting smaller and smaller, and you can see what this is, it's one half. Um, and at this point, we can't rename it anymore. And now we can see that simplified fraction of one half. So we have one half of a pizza, um, and, see, and we can also see that four eighths is equal to that one half. Okay. All right. Let's look at these next ones. Neither of these have the same denominator, and so that can make things a little bit more complicated, a little bit more complex. So let's model them really quick. Let's find what two thirds looks like. So I'll pull out my third, make two of them. Remember again that that numerator is how many pieces, and the denominator is how many pieces that hole has been cut into. So this is two thirds, and then we need one fourth. So I'll pull over a one fourth, and we're gonna combine these. And so you can see that we can, we can combine these together and look at them together, but then there's really no orientation to what they are because this pizza has been cut into thirds, into three pieces, and this pizza has been cut into four. So how can I do this? How can I get these to be able to tell me how many pieces the pizza has been cut into because we've got different sizes of pizza here. And so that's when we have to find that common denominator. We have to cut the whole into the same number of pieces. We have to start cutting these thirds into more pieces and that way we, and the fourths into more pieces so that we can compare them better and combine them better and be able to talk about them together. Right now we kind of have apples and oranges and we need to get them together into all being just fruit. <laughs> Bad example, but it kind of works here. So I'm going to select this third, these thirds, this two thirds, and I'm going to um, rename them. And you can rename them, you know, you can go as can keep on going further or you can go back down but let's let's look at six so I'm going to stop there and then come over here and rename this and I like this kind of exploratory activity where we're looking at 
we keep on cutting them. So basically what we've done is we've cut our thirds into halves. And so now we have six pieces. And then this one we've cut into the fourth into halves. And so now we have eighths, okay? And again, that eighth is coming from oriented back to the whole of how many pieces of the pizza is gonna take of that size to make a whole pizza. And it's eight pieces. And so these of course are still same problem. I can't put them together because they're not oriented the same way. And so I will rename again into ninths and I'll rename this one into twelfths. And then let me go back here and look at there. So I like that they're the same color so you can see that visually as well as now we've cut the pieces of pizza into the same number of pizzas. Like the whole has been both cut into twelfths if we were to complete the whole. Now we can combine them. So now I can put this one with the others. And I've not done anything to the fractions except for simply renaming them into like cutting them more. So I haven't changed the shape of them. I've just cut them into more pieces so that I could get the whole cut into the same number of pieces. Okay, so now you can count up how many twelfths there. There are 11 twelfths there. Um, you can merge those with this program and then see if you can rename them anymore. So you can um, hit this button to get smaller. So of course, name them into 24ths, but that, that is not simplified. That would be, you know, larger numbers, not simplified. And so here is where we would stop and we would count up how many units we have there. And there's 12, excuse me, 11. And then there's 12 pieces that the whole is, is, is into. If I added one more there, we would have 12 pieces and the whole would be complete. So that's what that denominator is. So I'll write that answer here. It is 11 twelfths. And through this process, we renamed our fractions. And so we took that 2 thirds and renamed it into twelfths. Um, and to do that, we um, multiplied that 3 by 4 to get to it being into 12 pieces. So basically, I took those pieces and cut them four times. <laughs> so that's where that 12 comes from, which meant that the two pieces that I had also got cut four times. And so I, I'm multiplying it by 4 as well. But that 8 twelfths. And then the fourths, I had to cut into three pieces to get into twelfths. And so that means I needed to, that, that one piece got cut into three. And so we ended up with three twelfths. Let me split those and show you them one more time. Just going to start over on that. So that two thirds, and one fourth, okay? When I moved them into twelfths, here's those two thirds, okay? Um, I am, you know, I go to six, three times two, and then three times three, and then three times four. So all that's happening there is those, um, those original thirds are getting cut into more pieces. And so that's where you see that they get cut into four pieces. There's that two thirds, if I can, show you that was this line right here. So it was cut right here. Those are the two thirds. And you can see that third, one third got cut into four pieces. And so therefore you have to have a four on the top. So we have two fours as well. So that's why this the two times the four. Okay. So hopefully that can help you see how we are renaming that fraction. Again, we're taking that those thirds and we in order to get to twelfths, which would ended up being that common denominator, I had to cut the third into four pieces. And so the one third got cut into four pieces. So we have one third cut into four and then another one third cut into four. So this one third got cut into four and this one third got it cut into four. And so we've got two times four, which is eight total pieces of the twelfths um, to make up the whole. So same thing over here with the fourth. This four, I had in order to get it to twelfths, I had to cut it into three pieces. And so now we can see that four times three, which is twelve, that's how many pieces to complete the circle. And then 
we have that one piece that we started with that got cut into three pieces. And so that's where that's where that three comes from. It's that three right here. Okay, so we renamed the fraction as eight twelfths. So you can count up here, there's eight of these twelfths and three of the other twelfths. Um, and then combine those together, eight plus three, we end up with the 11, 12. So hopefully that, like you've probably been taught those rules of find the common denominator, which is 12. We don't know, a lot of times we're multiplying the three times four together, um, or we are thinking about the least common multiple between three and four. And so we're trying to find what that is, and it's 12 in this case, the least common multiple between three and four is 12. And then we, um, we say, how many, what do we have to do to the three to get it to 12? Well, we have to also do that to the two. Um, what did we have to do to the four to get it to 12? Well, we also need to do that to the numerator, to the one, to stay equivalent, equal fractions. And then we can add those numerators and hopefully those rules that we've learned for so long are starting to make sense to you by seeing it visually. Let's look at one more, three fourths plus two thirds. Get my fourths here and I need three of them. I'll get my thirds here and I'll need two of them, okay? Same procedure, we're going to rename these fractions until we have a common denominator and I'm using three and four again, so we know what it is, but we'll, we'll go through that process. So I'll rename and rename just kind of play with these until we get equal here. And then this gets a little bit more interesting um, and we've renamed them. Let's go through what those are, write that in. We've renamed three fourths. Um, we've taken those three of the four pieces and here you can see those three pieces and we kind of divide it up to where the way it was before we not hitting that. Um, right here. Okay, so there's that three fourths you can see again, and we've, we've taken each third and cut it into three pieces. And that's representing um, taking that four and multiplying it by three. Well, in order to do that, we've got to also talk about the fact that we've got three pieces in each of these. So we've got three times three pieces now. We've got nine twelfths. Same thing with that two thirds. We took the thirds there right here. Okay, those are the two thirds. And then we had to cut them into four. So we're basically taking that three and multiplying it by four. Well, we have to do that same thing to the two. So we originally had two pieces, but because we cut each of those two pieces into fours, we now have two times four, eight pieces. So how many pieces do we have together? We have this nine plus these eight pieces combining together 17 pieces out of 12. And you can see what we've got something going on here where they are going to be um, greater than one. I'll do these up here now. Um, so let me just split these and complete my one. So this is eight. Um, and so I can complete, well, I'll need Our pieces here. Let's see if I can just merge them. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Merge these. So what I did is I just completed one to get the whole. So you can kind of see the mixed number here. We we can see before I did this, we could see that we had um, seventeen of the twelfths. I want to show that mixed number too, because 17 is greater than 12. So if I have 17 pieces of something that's cut into 12 pieces, I have more than a whole. I've got a 12 out of 12 in there. And so I've got a one, and then I can see up here that I've got five of these twelfths as well. And if it helps you, you can also rename that um, Oh, other way <laughs> down and simplify it 
until we get one. Okay, so now you can see that one and five twelfths. And five twelfths is not able to be simplified, but if you wanted to just try it, you're welcome to you know, see that. You can go to the 24th and then see it doesn't go any further. And so this is fully simplified. Um, you can represent it as an improper fraction or a mixed number in this case. And depending on what the directions say or depending on the, the fact is there's not a mixed number in the problem. And so you're not forced into a mixed number here. So I would recommend leaving improper fractions. All right, so hopefully that's starting to help you connect our fraction rules to what's actually happening if you were to cut something into pieces and see those fractions, whether it's a pizza or a pie, I love using food, um, to actually see those fractions. And I hope this is making more sense to you now. And I hope you can join me again for subtracting these and multiplying and dividing. Thanks, bye.